Welcome back to Lifestyle Strength with Ariel and myself, Lucas. Today we're going to dive into some topics on mental health, kind of piggybacking on our last conversation uh, in, in regards to your goals and really how you view yourself and what stage you're at in your wellness and just, just in your life and, you know, what you want to focus on. So what do you have for me? Well, um, you know, last week when we were talking about um, kind of our future selves and are we that person that needs to slow down or are we that person that needs to maybe um, invest our energy and kind of not be in a, a like a stalled state, I kind of spent some time with myself and was like, okay, like I know who I am and I'm that person that I can produce quantity all day. Um, but is it go 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 yes but is it quality and conveniently this week I'm on vacation so it's kind of given me that opportunity normally when I'm on vacation okay I'm that person that plans every last minute and this time I was like that just sounds so tiring I don't want to do that this time yeah it's not as restorative yeah exactly and I just needed like I needed rest and but I still want to do some of my bucket list stuff and I already have um, in fact, I'm headed to Dallas and I'll be swimming with otters, uh, later this week. It's a bucket list item to it's swim a, yeah. with otters. Yes, it is. That's a pretty cool bucket list item. Yeah. I, I must think, say. I think so too. I've never heard that before from someone. <laughs> really? Uh-uh. I love otters. Dolphins. Dolphins uh, maybe. Or no. sharks even. I've but done that. Otters. Never heard of otters. Otters. Yeah. But they're cool. They're like water cats yes and i'm, I'm gonna <laughs> feed a baby kangaroo her bottle i've fed a baby kangaroo before oh that's so awesome so you know speaking of this like this me kind of reflecting on like okay right this is who i am this is the time i need to like take some rest and i need to slow down uh in pertaining to like goals and kind of how we view our, ourselves and like you just said you're like man i've never heard anybody say otters i think it's so important that when we are talking about generalized things, people need to customize it to like what they need. Right. Right. And it's right. going to look different for everybody. Like your first choice might not be to like go to Texas and swim with otters. Yeah. I, I think, I think that's the, the, the thing too, in regards to specifically what you do doesn't really matter. It's about understanding what that thing does for you. Yes. From a principal perspective, right? Like we were talking about how those few things that you should focus on when getting started with your health, there may be some other principles in play in regards to maintaining or in regards to reassessing, mm -hmm. uh, being able to pivot or just to stop if you're in that stage of needing to stop. Right. There are different principles. So in this case, it's like, a bucket list item of something that I'm sure you've always wanted to do, you've dreamt about doing, like mm -hmm. it is energizing in a sense of being able to like cross that thing off. Yeah. Well, just the activity itself gets you moving and it aligns with like your active lifestyle already. Yes. Right. But also mentally provides you with the stimulation of I may never get to do this again or it's very fulfilling. It's like, fulfilling, right? Mentally. Yeah. Something you've looked forward to mm -hmm. doing that isn't harmful, right? Yeah. Or at least the risks of it being harmful are very low, right? Oh, yes. Like what's a what's an otter going to do to you versus like going and drinking on the beach all weekend. Right. Right. Obviously, there might be some mental benefits to that or some social benefits to that, mm -hmm. but, but you're we'll sacrificing care. your body, you're sacrificing getting thrown off of a routine because you're going to feel bad when you come back. Yes. Well, and also like if, if I have chosen, cause obviously it's different for everybody else. If I've chosen my vac vacation to be like restorative and recovery and rest, those things are counterproductive because they, they mentally might be satisfying, but like we talked about last time, long term, what are we sacrificing in, you know, the long term just for that short term gratification. Right. And, um, it, all this really got me thinking about something that affects all of us when it comes to kind of determining, can we slow down? Can we speed up if we need to? Can we focus on quality or quantity? Um, or do we get stuck almost in like 
a per- middle ground. Yeah, or even just propelled in one direction or the other. Right. And the key thing is suffering. Suffering can cause you to uh, be avoidant by being busy or by being frozen or stalled. Um, and, you know, that's one of those things where, like, last time we talked about just in a general sense, like, hey, where are you on that teeter-totter? Mm-hmm. And then it's like, well, let's talk about suffering because suffering can really propel you again in the wrong direction and it can be hard to get on the right direction. Um, and so I was kind of breaking down some some things that I think could be beneficial for people if they're in a state of suffering right now. Um, and the first thing I would say well, is... Before you before you go into it, I have a question for you. Yeah, yeah. What, what would you... Because I think in regards to the majority of what you're talking about, you're viewing suffering as a negative. Am I, am I correct there? I just yeah, sure. just, yes. Because I kind of have a polarizing view on this, but I'll tell you in a second, okay. but I want you to go through your your thing. Um, yeah, suffering is anything that's detrimental okay, so to your ability about... to be productive and healthy in life okay. and happy. Okay. I okay. think that's important to know yes. because I think, well, I'm just going to let you go ahead and then okay. we'll talk about my viewpoint because I have yeah. a slightly different view of that and definition okay. of that word. So Okay. Well, um, the first thing, if you're in a state of suffering, I recommend people to do is like ask yourself what you're suffering from. Um, and there we can categorize these. Is it physical suffering? Is it mental suffering? Is it emotional? Is it spiritual suffering? Um, and then from there, it could by oh, by the way, I would say it can include multiple categories at right. one time. Right? Just, lines. Yes. Disclaimer. It could be multiple things. It could be multiple things. Um, but. Is this suffering inflicted by yourself or outside forces? That's always a good question to ask yourself. Um, Is it resolvable or is it not resolvable? So, for example, if it's resolvable, what steps need to be taken? And obviously that's going to look different for everybody. But if it's not resolvable, say you have and you live with chronic pain, um, are there maintenance steps or things that you can put in place to reduce the suffering? Um, And in my field of work, a lot of times that's how I end up getting clients. They are suffered from something chronically um, and they're in so much pain. And, and, you know, maybe they went to the doctor, maybe they've been on these pain meds, or maybe like we've talked about, maybe they're that person on that teeter totter and they can't get themselves even to a balanced point because they're, they're suffering. And in this case, they're chronically suffering from a physical ailment um, and they find themselves coming to see me. And something that we talk about, whether it's somebody with chronic pain or even an athlete with a short-term injury that they've never experienced before, is this idea that if you sustain an injury um, or surgery, the reality is, and or especially if you have chronic pain, the reality is, is you're probably going to have to maintenance for the rest of your life. And people don't like hearing that. Um, However, I don't see maintenance of an injury or chronic pain any different than I do of your daily maintenance in life. You have to shower every day. Right. That's maintenance. Yeah. You know, you, you've got to eat food. You have to have right. energy and sustainability. That's maintenance. Right. Um, so sometimes it can be overwhelming for somebody to go, oh, my gosh, you're telling me I need to do this, and I'm never, quote, going to be the same that I was um, from having to do that maintenance. Right. However, maintenance is maintenance. Now, what they could say to me, which I would definitely agree with, is, oh, man, I've got something else I've got to add to my list. Now, that I could see as like, oh, man, that would be just one more more, thing I have to do. A little bit more of a burden. But when it comes to suffering like we're talking about here, I think that these are some good steps to kind of break down because everything we talked about in the previous episode None of that matters if you're stuck on your teeter totter right, and nothing right. is getting you off of your side of the teeter totter. You're like, right. I know who I am. I know how I am. But there's this thing called suffering for me and it's ailing me. And right. I don't know how to move out of that suffering. And what does that look like? What are the first steps I need to take so that I can propel myself into a more balanced, happier, healthier life? Style? Right. Okay. Okay. Well, I think you hit the nail on the head in regards to the categories and understanding that I, in order to get out of a place that you're at, 
whether it's doing more or whether it's stopping, both of those things are actions, right? Yes. And being very decisive in making a decision is what's going to help you change your position. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Ooh, I didn't mean to make a rhyme there, but nah, it has happened. Good. <laughs> <laughs> um, I often use an analogy with my clients in regards to taking better actions. And it follows this idea that you have to be willing to carry something. Mm. And you already said the categories, right? In regards to your suffering, yeah, which is it could be physical, it could be emotional, it could be spiritual, it could be mental, mental worldly, yeah. like socially, mm-hmm. right? There's all these different little categories you can put them in, right? And they can blur, like you said. But to me, and, and what I coach a lot of my clients on is inaction is a decision. Yes. Action is a decision. Yes. Regardless of if you choose right or you choose wrong. Yes. Right? The act of choosing is really important because it's like a muscle, just like with anything. The more you choose, the more decisive you are, the quicker you're going to get feedback. And then you can pivot or double down or do whatever you need to do to continue along whatever path right it's like it's like the, muscle memory you're creating this form right? of muscle memory so the more decisions it. the more decisions you can make the quicker you can make them the quicker you're going to start to see change from where you're currently at right now if we can put those decisions into those categories mm-hmm. and i i i call them uh my fuck buckets because oh. I, <laughs> I don't I want to know why. but it but it because i truly think that there's only so many fucks you can give right yeah that's true and so the PG version would be like your gratitude buckets, right? So I have these little categories. Let's just keep it simple. Physical, you know, relationships, socially, spiritual, religious, mm-hmm. and let's say material, career, money. You know, okay. those those are the things that matter, okay. I think, to a lot of people, okay. right? Very broad. So if the actions that I'm taking aren't filling up that bucket, mm-hmm. I'm not turning on that 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 gratitude faucet yeah. of water, Yeah. then what am I doing? Hmm. I'm just spilling everything out in front of me and making a mess. But there's a caveat to making that decision. And I think that's important in regards to suffering, right? Because if you make the decision to take an action that doesn't fill up your bucket, yeah. okay, well, now you're going to suffer because you have this mess that you have to clean up. Yes. Okay. Or you turn on the faucet to fill up your bucket, make a good decision towards your personal health and well-being. Make a good decision in regards to, you know, calling that person you haven't talked to in a long time to build that relationship. Mm-hmm. Or making that good decision to study the way that you see the world, whether that's religion, spiritual, science, knowledge, however you see it, right? Mm-hmm. And you choose to turn on that faucet to fill up your bucket. Well, okay, you haven't made a mess, but you got to be willing to carry that bucket. Mm, and that so requires true. work and that requires an element of suffering. It's the same thing we see in the gym, right? Mm-hmm. So to yes. boil it down to like a health and wellness standpoint, okay, you could suffer in the long term by eating just whatever food you feel like eating that day, not going to the gym because it's hard. Yeah. Okay, well, you're going to suffer throughout your life by way of pain, chronic disease, yeah, early bad death. health, early death. Okay, that is a... That's a long-term suffering. Yes. Or I can turn on, I can make that decision and turn on that faucet mm-hmm. and be willing to carry that bucket every single day when I show up at the gym and I lift weights. Yeah. And it sucks sometimes. Mm-hmm. Doesn't feel good. I think for the majority of people, you're tolerating it. Mm-hmm. It's not like you and me. We like it, right? Yeah, it's sure. a bonus if you like taking those actions, right? Right. And I think that those actions can exist in a way that you like. It doesn't have to be going and lifting weights. It can be going for a walk, right? There's so many things that can feel good turning on that faucet right but you have as you continue to do it Mm -hmm. it's going to get heavier yes you're going to have to continue to carry it and that's the only way to get stronger right and to me that that is what like lifestyle strength means right right in all of those different elements and categories so to me i think time works against us at some point we're going to suffer that's just yeah. That's 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 one of the tragedies of life, right? right? As beautiful as it is and as awesome as being here, 
is there's always going to be an element of suffering that you face. And and it's a matter of perspective. Some people yeah. suffer way more than other people, right? Well, I was going to say what I kind of see you saying is, you know, the reality is is it's a, always a give and take. Like when we invest energy in one place, we take it from another, right? Um, and sometimes when we prevent suffering here, we're going to suffer a little bit more here. So we're saying in the, in the you know, immediate day, we're going to suffer so that we can have less long-term suffering um, if we choose this health and wellness lifestyle that we have chosen, right? right. We're, we're saying, hey, I'll strap that bucket to my back and I'll carry it every day so that long-term, A, I'm not carrying a different bucket of pain and chronic disease and all this, right. but also that my future self, right? Let's go back to that. My future self um, isn't going to die early. And he's right. not going to die in a painful way. <laughs> well, I think I think about it like an investment, right? Like, I can I can let the world choose what I'm going to suffer from mm. by not taking the actions that fill up my buckets, right. or I can choose to fill up my buckets and be maybe not entirely, but much more in control what I'm suffering from. And I would take that trade off any single every single day of the week. Yeah, absolutely. I would rather choose what I carry right. and do more of that because there is only so much shit you can do in a day. Yeah. So if I'm choosing what I'm willing to work and to suffer for to get that benefit in the long run, well, I'm by like just law of averages, I'm minimizing how much suffering is chosen for me. Yes, absolutely. Right. Yeah. By just living life. And yeah. that doesn't mean that, you know, shit's not ever going to happen, right? Like terrible stuff happens, you know? And I think it puts you, I think you minimize your, your risks for being resentful, for having that victim mentality. Yeah. I also, choices. right, mm -hmm. right. I also think you get more in touch with understanding when something is actually out of your control versus you making an excuse saying, oh, that was, you know, that was the circumstances fault or that was somebody else's fault. It, right. it teaches you how to take more ownership because you're practicing literally turning on that faucet yeah, every day sure. in your bucket. Yeah. I mean, I guess all of it, though, at the beginning just starts with, like, assessing what your suffering is, though. Because how can you turn on, how do you even know what your buckets are? Right. <laughs> you know, if you don't first sit with yourself and figure out and, like, go through these categories and say, okay, like, this is where I am. You know, this is this is uh, short-term, long-term. These are, these are the things I want to invest in my buckets. Um, or am I just making a fucking mess in front of my buckets? Right. Pardon my language here, but like like you were saying, like, what am I doing, right? And those choices that we make. I grew up on the um, kind of like my, my parents. They just preach this all the time. And it really, I live by it as an adult. Good choices, good consequences, bad choices, bad consequences. I mean, you make that choice. Ultimately, yeah. take control of your life and, and make those choices, you know? But I think, you know, like you said, what are those choices? And that that's what we have to sift through. That's what every human is experiencing. And I think that we should make the simple choices as quickly as possible, right? Like the simple choice being, I, I'll, I'll often say when making a decision, for my clients is to use the word obviously because if you use the word obviously then it makes it a lot clearer what you should do right yeah. obviously obviously if you eat the whole pizza and the whole pie and you sit there on your couch things are gonna go bad right like obviously. you're gonna gain weight like you're upset not gonna feel stomach. good about it you would have an upset like obviously that's gonna happen right yeah but in the moment it's not it's not that black and white, right? Your brain is, you know, people, especially someone who might be addicted to food, right? Their brain is telling them, like, you are hungry. You need to eat. Like, it's going to feel so good to eat, right? Yeah. But if you can figure out what that phrase is or that trigger is to to pull you back for a second mm -hmm. from, from making that decision and saying, well, obviously, if I eat that, I know I'm not going to feel good. Obviously, if I decide to go for a walk right now, then... In the long run, 
if I can continue to do that, I'm going to see some some sort of benefits, right? Right. And it works really well with very scientifically based things, right? Because we know if you're choosing between activity or binge eating, which one's better, right? right? Obviously. And so practicing just those simple those simple uh, decisions over and over again yes. help you to when you come up with a really hard decision. That's so true because you're building muscle memory almost in those small things. And so when that big thing comes, it's not going to be as big. You have things in place and you've already been doing it over and over and over again with the small stuff. Um, actually, that leads me to the the what I talk with my clients about just on the daily is uh, we always want to address the problem so that we resolve the symptoms, right? Um At the end of the day, when we're talking about suffering, where we're talking about where you are on that teeter-totter, always, always be willing to go back to the source of the problems that aren't getting you moving or that have you moving too much or not investing in quality or quantity or, um, you know, making a mess in front of your buckets and not investing in your buckets and turning your faucet on, right, and not creating muscle memory. Figure out what those problems are because... If you can address the problems, you are resolving the symptoms. And there is no point, I tell my clients this all the time, they can come in, I'll work on you. Let's say, I'm going to give an example with anatomy. Um, Let's say your problem is weak muscle. Like, let's say you've got weak um, quads or hip flexors. And you're coming in and you're saying, but that's a problem. But you're coming in and you're saying, Ariel, my low back chronically kills me. Like, I've, it, it's always hurting. I've suffered from it for years and years and years. And it's not only my back, it's my hamstrings too. So I try to remind people, I mean, knowledge is power, right? So when they come in, we're going to address, you know, why this is actually taking place. Like, why is your back and your hamstrings hurting? And why is the quads the actual, they're the problem, right? right. Um, they're tight. They're weak. And they're causing your back and your hamstrings to take over to do the job for you. Now, I tell them all the time, I'm going to work and touch your symptom. I'm going to touch your back. I'm going to touch your hamstrings. I'm going to touch your quads too. But I've now given you the information. So when you know better, you do better. So I'm going to need you to hit up my boy Lucas. And I'm going to need you to go and strengthen your quads. And I'm going to need you to go foam roll and do some recovery. And when you strengthen those quads... We're now going to eliminate those symptoms. Or you can continue coming back to me week after week after week, and those muscles are going to continue to be tight on your posterior chain, and you're going to continually chronically go, Ariel, I had a couple days relief, but then I had to come back to you. And I'm like, okay, well, why is that? Because we hammer away at these symptoms, and we're never willing to address our problems. But if we just go straight to the source, as painful as it can be, especially when it's things like suffering— and I mean, suffering, we've talked about the the broad dynamic of suffering. And I think in this case, I'm talking about suffering that some things could be outside of your control, whether it's loss or you're stuck in your head mentally or you've been diagnosed with depression and, and what that can that suffering can feel true, like. And true suffering. True suffering. Right. And right. like, what are you doing and can you do to resolve some of these problems so that you don't have to deal with any symptoms. And that can be tough, man. That can be so tough to say, I'm going to sit with myself or, or worse, I'm going to let my friend be honest with me. I'm going to let that professional I went to um, for strength work or to lose weight or to uh, get out of some chronic pain and to find out like you are your own worst enemy, like you could have been doing things. Um, I mean, that can be hard. I Especially if you have that. a lot of symptoms, yeah, right? Absolutely. One problem can cause so many different symptoms. Yes. And you can ca- get caught up in that whirlwind of mm-hmm. trying to treat the things that are you're perceiving as suffering when the reality is is that there is probably a problem somewhere or less problems somewhere. Yes. That if you dealt with those multitude of symptoms would recover from yes uh or at least improve to a degree yes well i mean i think that just my mindset has always been like if i'm gonna do something i'm gonna do it well and i'm gonna do it right it's kind of that difference between like therapy versus treatment Mm -hmm. like therapy helps you to become aware of what a problem is by treating 
the symptoms and giving you some relief, whereas treatment is or should be fixing the actual problem. Yeah, application. And mm-hmm. the pro- I think the problem with that is that therapy is sexy and it offers immediate relief and it gets us in this mindset that that is treatment when the reality is is that treatment usually requires you to turn that faucet on and carry that bucket a little bit. Yeah. And it doesn't have to be like a, you know, you're pouring everything out into that bucket and weighing it down. I think people far underestimate the value of just a drop in your bucket every single day because if you if you just took one drop every day in your bucket and you did that every single day for the next month and then you did it for the next six months and then you did it for the next year how big how much more filled up would your bucket be how much heavier would it be and it never felt like it was ever getting any heavier the whole time you were doing it because it was just a drop right just a little bit right that's why i encourage people who who are suffering from maybe some physical pain or you know the typical like low back pain right like the treatment the the root cause for most lo- just chronic low back pain is going to be just strengthen your body mm-hmm. and that can be going for a walk that can be doing some sit-ups it can be doing some glute bridges it can be this tiniest little bit right five minutes yep every day of exercise for so much more gratitude in being pain-free. Yeah, absolutely. Well, well and it's, it should feel satisfying to know that you are in control of your choices and your body and the outcome. Like, I think we talked about last time, patterns, guys. You know, if, if your patterns over time prove to you that, okay, I made these choices, these small daily decisions to invest in my bucket. And one thing that I want to say about this is you said, you know, um, over time, you don't even notice that bucket gets heavier. It's because we acclimate. It's called acclimation. We physically acclimate, acclimate to being in pain, mm-hmm. or we can acclimate to um, daily involvement, like carrying our buckets, like you're talking about. And we right. acclimate to that. That becomes who we are now. Yeah. It's not that a conscious decision. It's like, this is what I do. I built that habit, and here I am. But you have the choice yes. on that decision. Yes. Right? Absolutely. Like you absolutely can choose which direction you go. Yep. And I, I think so many people are always viewing like that grass is always greener mm-hmm. on the other side. Right. And either they don't invest enough for long enough mm-hmm. or they stay put because change is scary. Mm. Right? It's like once you decide, especially with things that take time. Right. You know, like, well, always, everything takes time, yeah. right? Whether you're building a business, whether you're building your body, whether you're building a relationship. Yeah. Think about all those things. All those things that like really matter in life. Mm-hmm. Did you just wake up one day and be like, oh, I got it all? Yeah. Or was it something that like you worked on for years, mm-hmm. right? People date for years before they get married. Right. Years. People work on their health and their body before they ever compete or even if you don't compete before you lose the weight, like right. before you feel confident in yourself, right? Years of time. I think that's the irony is you also have to invest years and you don't just wake up diabetic. You don't just wake up with 80 extra pounds. Yeah. You don't, you know what I mean? Like You've been making that mess for years, years. before you ever even noticed that the floor was wet. Yes, because again, right? you've acclimated to the choices you're making. Yeah. Um, you've acclimated to having this weight on you and it isn't till you know your knees are completely giving out and you're having like double knee surgery that maybe you're going oh wait maybe maybe I am I have been making some poor choices in right. daily decisions because it it's really just those daily habits and I, I just thought of this because we were talking about last time in regards to trying to understand if you're the person that needs to stop or the person that needs to go and do more. Mm-hmm. And I think just like listening to what we're talking about, if you're sitting here thinking, you know, like for yourself, right, this vacation has mm-hmm. helped you to realize, hey, you need a break for a second mm-hmm. to recharge, yes. right? And to make sure the faucets are aligned with the buckets because you've been doing a lot yeah. and we need to see, okay, am I, are you making a mess mm-hmm. or are you filling up the buckets, right? Yeah. Even though I know that's all you consciously thought, but no, like but essentially, that's what it is. Essentially, it's what it is, right? 
Versus if you're the person that like, you're like, wow, there's a mess on the floor right now. Well, that should tell you enough of what you need to do. Yeah. If you feel like, if you don't feel like there's a mess, maybe you need to take a stop or take a second to stop and just look around and see if there's a mess. And if you're like listening to this right now, and you're like, man, I got a mess going on. Like I did a, there is <laughs> shit on the floor. I need to start cleaning it up. Well, then you're the person that needs to go. Yeah. Yeah. Or, I mean, like, like we said, if you're, if you're acclimated to this mess on the floor, um, we had talked about it in the previous episode. Um, there is no harm, no foul in getting objective viewers, whether it's friends, family, or whether right, it's specifically right. finding somebody that is a practitioner in, in whatever field you need um, to help address that mess. Yeah. Um, just to be like, wait, is there really a mess? Like, you know, again, if we acclimate, we're so, we become, and this is to our detriment, right? This can be to our detriment that we become so comfortable with who we are and man you you know you hear this all the time well that's just how i am well that's just who i am that's how i am like you're right that's how you are and who you are because you you created it you created that like you also have the choice to step out of that and i think uh my question to you since we've been talking about choices too is what would you recommend to somebody who feels that they don't have choice and like how do we get them to a point where like you you have responsibility and this is your autonomy like you know uh, self-awareness of like you can make choices right 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 without talking to like an individual specific person Mm -hmm. all you can give is like general advice right right i think i kind of mentioned it earlier too the key is to just making small choices. Yeah. Um, Jordan Peterson talked about this one time on a video or a podcast somewhere where he had a client who didn't feel like anything was in his control. Yeah. Right? And it was a mess, and he knew it was a mess, but he felt like he couldn't get out of it, right? right. And the mess had gotten so big that it seems insurmountable, Mm -hmm. right? And so one of the things that this person particularly was struggling with was like keeping his home clean. So it was a literal mess. Like there were other problems going on in his life that he felt like were insurmountable, but literally where he was living was messy. Right. Clothes everywhere, food Mm -hmm. left out, dishes not done, like, Dirty. Mm -hmm. And what Mr. Peterson had said to do was don't feel like you need to tackle the whole thing at once. Right. Every day, like just pick up one piece of clothing. Yeah. Sweep up a small area of the floor. Mm -hmm. Just do something that takes 30 seconds. Yeah. A minute to do. Mm -hmm. And just commit to doing that one action, making that one decision every day that's so small that takes no time. And that builds, you know, it builds for him taking that action for 30 seconds to, okay, well, that only took 30 seconds. I can do something else for 30 seconds. Right. That builds to, well, wow, I cleaned up a lot in a week just taking really small actions. You know, I really could probably do a little bit more and put that together. And before you know it, a week or two goes by and you got a really clean house. Yeah. Right. So I, I think that can be extended to all the things that you're, you're trying to work on. Yeah, right? all, like all choices, all choices is don't feel like you need to go all in. I'm a I'm this is one of my downfalls where I feel like if I can't do it all as best as I can, then I don't want to do it at all. Me. And I can make the excuse to not do it. And that's not a good mindset no. to be in the best mindset is to be willing to do small things one at a time consistently, right? right? And it it sounds so simple. Like you hear that all the time is like, you know, just just make small changes here and there, right? Right. I think where people mess up is they think that small changes can get big results fast. Mm. And that unfortunately is not how it works, right? Right. Like small choices get you big results. 
but over the extents of long periods of time. Yeah, eventually. And I do really well myself when I commit to taking an action without an end result in like, mind. Right? Like I might have a reason I want to take the action. Yeah. But if I don't get caught up with like getting specific. So here's an example of something that I did recently, right? I'm going on my vacation here in about um, a month and a half. Okay. A couple months later. We're going to the end of November. We're going on a cruise. Okay. And it's a cruise, the end of November, beginning of December, right? For those of you, if you're not into lifting, that's like bulking season, right? right? Like everyone's trying to like put on mass. I'm like, well, I'm going to be out in the Caribbean. I'm going to have my shirt off. I don't want to bulk up, right? If yeah. anything, I need to trim down a little bit. Right. Okay. And so the goal being like, okay, I need to lose some fat. Yeah. So my action in regards to how I can accomplish that thing is, okay, well, I'm going to be in a deficit mm -hmm. for the next period of time. I'm going to limit my sugar intake, my alcohol intake until that point because I know that taking those little small things yeah. are going to build into me burning more fat yeah. from, you know, last two months into the next month and a half. Right. But what I avoid is saying like, okay, well, I could probably lose, I could probably stand to lose, you know, 10, 15 pounds of fat. Okay. Look, now I have to make sure that I'm losing X amount of fat per week by doing all of these things right now, it starts to get convoluted into what the actual like results should be. The results shouldn't be, I'm trying to lose 10, 15 pounds mm -hmm. by this certain date. Right. My results should be, I want to be leaner. Yeah. Okay, cool. Yeah. I've decided what frames my goal. Right. Nothing else matters at that point right. other than the actions that I take. Right. So it's almost like that expectations, like, you know, you want a result but you're not going to be so hyper focused on some of these. Um, I, you know what? I would compare it to like fad diets, a very structured regiment. This is what you do. Right. You're just saying, hey, like on a broad scale, small habits every day, I'm going to avoid sugars and alcohol. Okay, cool. Not only that, even though your result is to look leaner, you're also building those habits, right? Right. You're carrying your buckets and you. You might not even realize it just to get to this one goal, and it might be a sustainable thing that you continue and you keep. Right. Right? Um, and it, it's healthy for you at the end of the day. And I think for, for me personally, and I've seen this in my clients as well, is that in America, I think I think America's worse about it because we work so much, and it's m much more of that, like, kind of dominate mentality of, like, you know, beat everybody, right. compete all the time. The reality is, is you're really only competing against yourself, mm -hmm. and so... I think it's to our detriment to always set hyper-specific goals and then get caught up with just that goal. Like, all a goal should do is set your frame of like, okay, um, the goal is to burn fat. Okay, awesome, cool. Used to, we would say, like, you want to set SMART goals, specific, measurable, attainable, time. Right. And it's not that that acronym is wrong or bad or that you can't use it. But I think what happens is when we get something like that, it, it's the tighter we put our box around that, the harder it is to achieve that very, very specific thing and the more defeated you feel mm -hmm. if, you, if you don't get there. So like an example would be we view, our, we view ourselves as healthy if you have six-pack abs, right? The media shows us like, oh, you know, health. Here's a man who's shredded. Here's a woman who's shredded, right? right. And whether or not you think that's true or not, it's not, right? Like right. true health isn't being the leanest possible body fat right. ever. And so you think that, okay, well, that is a good goal for me to aim for. Mm -hmm. And so already it's not even falling into the acronym. Already it's falling into something someone else said, something someone else did. It's hyper-specific and the reality of you achieving it right. is probably not all that true right unless you like it, it can be it is possible right but to the detriment yeah, of well, even if locking you, you in right and even if you do though like what have you actually built over that time frame have you built something that's sustainable like we're you talking might have about worked lifestyle on your, you might have lifestyle. yeah you might have worked on your discipline right you right. might have learned 
how to do some things that correlate with being healthy. Right. But you go to the point where you're so boxed in and you're so hyper-focused on this thing mm -hmm. that is out here that it really, really like doesn't matter. Right. That you start to give up like no free lunches, right? You're going to give up something else. Yeah. Right? Yeah. And to me, setting goals shouldn't be that meticulous. We should set big goals because the bigger the frames, the more wiggle room mm -hmm. and the more you you allow yourself to actually learn what it means to get that goal. Right. Versus saying like, I have to lose 10 pounds within this certain time frame right so that i can go do this thing so that i can feel a certain way so that it's like well how okay like how how much do you expect to really be able to hit that goal and then hit all those other things within that goal right right, right. there's so many little things that have to be checked off for you to feel accomplished when the reality is is that if we're building a healthy lifestyle bingo that's the word healthy lifestyle right like if we box ourselves in we're almost negating the process and what we're what we we want to achieve or what we would encourage y'all to achieve is like you know set these goals yes do these things yes do you also get the opportunity to lose weight be more mobile all these things because you're building this lifestyle that's awesome that's a bonus that's sustainable that's right. something that your future self's going to appreciate and there's absolutely nothing wrong with like setting goals no there's absolutely, absolutely not. nothing wrong with setting those things and it, you mentioned like fad diets earlier. It's like there's nothing wrong with, well, take wrong's the wrong word. <laughs> um, I, there's nothing wrong with practicing a fad diet if it, you feel like it can help you in a way. Hmm. The difference is, is that when we put the meaning on it as, as like that shiny object, this is the end all be all, this is the solution to my problem. When the reality is, is these are strategies, these are tactics that help you achieve a bigger picture. And that bigger picture isn't losing 10 pounds by this certain time, by this sort. The big picture is feeling good, looking good, being strong, being able to move. Like, mm -hmm. I feel like we, we get too, like I said, boxed in with these super specific things when most of us, and I'm speaking for hopefully everybody listening, is that we want to feel good. Right. We want to look good. We want to have energy. We want to be able to manage our stress because Mobile. we want to, we yeah, move your body. You want to live a little longer. You want to live a greater quality of life. Mm -hmm. Like, and all of those things are so broad in what they can be. Right. Because the process of getting all those things and improving all those, those buckets are broad. Yes. Right. And that's why the buckets are broad. Yeah. Right. And that's why we, we encourage y'all to sit here assess yourself, you know, uh, figure out where you are on the teeter-totter, figure out the things that you suffer from, figure out the things that you're willing to suffer for. Right. Right? They're suffering from and suffering for. I, I'll, I'll suffer for my future self to not die early. <laughs> like, I will suffer. I'll carry my buckets right I'm now. I'm going to suffer yeah. better than everybody else. That's the goal. That's, there you go. I mean, <laughs> bam. I mean, guys, that is Lucas being very competitive. That's, you know, both of our personalities, I would say that's how we are. Suffer well. Yeah, suffer well, but, like, make those choices. Um, yes, set those broad goals and, and know yourself. So if you're listening to the episode and you're going, man, like, yeah, they're making some good points, but, like, I need specifics. Well, I'm, I'm, I mean, I'm speaking for myself, not Lucas here. Um, I'm not a fad diet. And the reason I say that is because um, I touch about a thousand bodies a year. And over the last 10 years, that's 10,000 bodies. And while you can look at the anatomy chart and see that generalized, everybody has the same body, everybody really doesn't. And that also means that I can't give you, I can give you, um, uh, Lucas talks about it a lot, your building frame right? You get some buildings, um, the frame of your building, and as you build that foundation, but you need to get very specific with yourself and have some self-awareness and go, okay, what are mine? What are these categories? Where in this category here, you know, where am I sitting? What are my, what am I suffering from mentally? And what am I willing to suffer, suffer for mentally and spiritually and physically? Um, and emotionally, those kind of things. We're throwing so much at you right now. It's probably going to like, like we've talked about so many words that I could imagine somebody listening and be like, oh my God, that's so much to yeah. have to think about. So 
on that note, I think that becoming aware, like you said, Mm -hmm. of where your real problems are, not your symptoms, where your real problems are, or having somebody to help you become aware of however you need to become aware, okay? Figure out, okay, where are the real problems? And it's okay to get specific in addressing those problems. Yeah. But from a year from now, how many of those specific problems have you solved so that broadly you've become a stronger person? Mm -hmm. Because right now it might be you're not being patient enough. Right now it might be you're not showing up and you're not being disciplined. You're not executing what you need to do. It might be you're not making time to do those things. You might be proficient at doing it. You just, you're not putting time on the calendar to do it, right? right? Those are specific problems that you can solve and address. But as you start to solve those things and as you bring them up to par of your feeling like, okay, I'm taking steps forward. Mm-hmm. It's not, I can coast now. <laughs> the idea is that, okay, now there are other problems that need to be addressed mm-hmm. and you have to constantly be aware of those things. And that's what helps you fill up those buckets time and time again. Yes. So it's evolving over time. And I think we talked about that in the last episode as well. Right. Um, goodness. Yeah, you're right. We covered a lot today. Yeah, we, have, we covered a lot. We <laughs> Honestly, I've maybe never been more confused in this. <laughs> <laughs> really. Um, I think, you know, at the end of the day, guys, figure out where you are at the, on the pendulum. Figure out what you're suffering from, what you're willing to suffer for. Fill up your buckets. Don't be making a fucking mess in front of your own buckets because this is your life. You know, you have choices have some self-awareness. Um, you have not only the um, opportunity, but you have the um, responsibility uh, to do this for yourself. Um, and if you are one of those people that can't do it for yourself, uh, do it for those around you. Do it for your kids and your grandkids and the people who love you, who want to see you here for a very long time. Um, this is why we talk so much about health, wellness, and lifestyle. We want you to be strong in those things, right? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, you never guaranteed an amount of time while you're here. And so I think the quality of that time is of the utmost importance. And you can buy yourself time by making the choice and maybe a small risk for a massive amount of reward in increasing your time, increasing your quality mm-hmm. while you're here. Because at the end of the day, you're either going to have to clean up the mess or sit in the mess if you don't want to yeah. clean it up, or you can get strong. Yeah, don't even make a mess. Like, like invest in your Or buckets. you can get strong. Like, that's yeah. the choice. Um, so, yeah, that's, all, that's what I got. Yeah. Well, guys, um, I know we, we uh, talked about a lot. We left you with a lot. But go carry your buckets. Fill your buckets up. Invest in yourself, and uh, we'll see you on the next episode. Peace out. See you.